eternal God, creator of heaven and earth. At this moment, O Lord, we ask for you to open the skies. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O Lord. May you travel through all the galaxy. Touch down in the Milky Way. Pass through all the planets, O Lord, that you have created. And touch down on this earth. Not only this earth, O Lord, but we seek you even now to this small island, Jamaica, land we love. Not only Jamaica, O Lord, but Westmoreland. This very spot in Alma that we have set up. This gospel series to spread to this era, this neck of the wood, O Lord. We ask for your Holy Spirit to touch down even right now. Fill this place, O Lord, with your spirit. Yes. That all who are present here may not go home the same they came. O Lord, we ask, even so far, even in the infantry at this time, for you to pour out a double portion upon him. Yes. May as he proclaim your word, O Lord, souls may be won for your cause. We are truly living in trouble sometimes. The signs are fast fulfilling that your coming is near. So we ask, O Lord, that as your spirit touch down, Alma will be awakened to know that they have a heaven to gain and a hell to run away from. The devil is out in full force, distracting and destroying their people. But O Lord, we pause for this month for a renewal of your Holy Spirit. May everything, O Lord, be done into your name and honor and glory. We know you will never disappoint us. So all that can be done, O Lord, do it for us, we ask. That when you come, all of us here, all of those who, in the hearing of my voice, will be running to you to heal as the Lord and Savior. Have your own sweet, in, sweet way now, we pray, O Lord. Because we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Without a doubt, we know that we have been that you lend me your ears for a few minutes. <laughs> Pastor Billings. Javain Alshane Billings. Also known as Javi or Marga Johnson. Born on June a few years ago in Content, Westmoreland, Jamaica to Ashton Billings and Alma Whitehead. <laughs> Pastor Billings, as we know him now, is the youngest of four children. Carisha, Verona, and Elroy. He spent his formative years surrounded by his loving, extended family in rural communities such as Kentucky, Rosebank, Content, Waterworks, and Pinnock Shaftston. This close-knit environment instilled in him a love for God and an and an abundance of natural and diverse skills including electrical work as you saw him working on this tent carpentry plumbing cooking and of course singing but cricket remained his favorite 
pastime. Pastor Billings attended the Kentucky Infant School. He then moved on to the Holly Hill Infant and Primary School, where he passed his GSAT examinations in 2006. He then attended Godfrey Stewart High School, graduating in 2011. Raised in the Seventh-day Adventist faith, he actively served various departments at his home church. His passion for ministry led him to enroll at Northern Caribbean University in 2015 to pursue a bachelor's degree in religion and theology. After a brief hiatus in 2016, he resumed his ministerial studies in 2017 and graduated in 2020. Pastor Billings, many of you who didn't know this, taught social studies and Bible at Savannah Lamar High School. Concurrently, he worked as a Bible worker with Pastor Jeminson in Jointwood, St. Elizabeth, and with Pastor Powell in Black River. Recognizing his dedication and passion, the West Jamaica Conference appointed him to intern with Pastor Award Morgan in the Waterworks District of Churches. In August 2023, Pastor Billings moved to Grange Hill District to support the pastoral duties of Pastor Lassels James during his illness. On March 24, 2024, Pastor Billings was installed as a pastor of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, Grange Hill District. Guided by the text, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. He serves with humility, compassion, and devotion. With a strong foundation in faith, family, and community, Pastor Javain Alshane Billings, otherwise known as Marga Johnson, embodies the selfless leadership that we in this community is looking for. Inspiring countless lives, he moves on claiming the word of God to everyone. To the depths of the sea, creation revealing your majesty. From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring, every creature unique in the song it sings. All it's claiming, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, girl. Oh, powerful, unsingable, awestruck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim.
All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask my my ushers to help me to give. Keep your hands up. I have some things here that I want for you to read. There are some that talk about hope. There's one that talk about taking a little step towards Christ. And there are others there that are intended to bless your heart as it is. That we expect of you that when you come here, that you don't leave empty handed. You don't leave empty handed because what? God always blesses those who come close and listen to him. And so with that said, Right, and while they, they give out, I'll tell you the topic for Tuesday night. Do you want to hear the topic for Tuesday night? Yeah. Tuesday night, you will be listening to No Bangara. Yeah. No Bangara. You can't miss that. You can't miss that tonight. As I promise you, I'm going to speak to you shortly under the caption. One man against the world. One man against the world. We are indeed living in a troublesome time. And oftentimes there are problems, wars, and even as you war, you wonder if there will be any way of victory. But today I'm going to tell you about one man that is standing against the world. One man against the world as I invite my praise team to come and bless our heart with that song that I love so much. If you don't know it, you're going to learn it before you leave here. And when you go home, when you're in your bathroom, it may become your next best song to that song that you normally sing in your bathroom. But I hope that the meaning of the, the, the words that are placed in the song would have blessed your heart. And so as we go forward, you will sing it with power. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saves a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas God, move down out of your children's mind. 
And even so, God, as I speak to them, help them, oh God, not just to believe, but even so, help them to surpass their unbelief, we pray. Even now, God, we ask that your unending love may be felt in our hearts, we pray. Yes, Sunday, we pray and say thanks. Amen. Amen. One man against the world. The sad reality is that there is something that I need on a need distant and it's not here as yet. But one of these nights, I hope by Tuesday night, you will see. By Tuesday night, I hope to have my projector up so that you can visualize and you can see scriptures as we use them. One man against the world. In 1944, there was a soldier by the name of Hiro Onanda. Hiro was a soldier, a Japanese soldier, and he was deployed to, uh, uh, left in Lumbang in the Philippines. Hiro was given an instruction, and the instruction was simple. Take full control until we return and we relieve you. Hiro was one of the Japanese uh, that who believed that if, if you were to get rid of Hiro, you had to kill him. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. You see, Hiro was a man who says, once the battle still rages, I'm gonna fight up until I die. Hiro was all determined that no matter what the call, if he was left alone, he's gonna fight. In fact, the story said that Hiro spent 10,000 days fighting. Oh, you missed that. There are 365 days in a year. Hiro spent over 30 years fighting a war even when the war was ended. The Japanese and others said many times they would have sent individuals to say to Hiro, Hiro, the war is over. But Hiro said, my commander did not tell me so. And because my commander did not relieve me of my duty, I'm going to fight her until my commander come and relieve me. It so happened. That it took a very long time for, for Onanda to give up. He says that he embraced the principle promoted by his country military command. It says losing is inconceivable. Surrendering is shameful. Suicide is unimaginable. This was Hiro's philosophy that he's gonna fight uh, every single day of his life. It got the good thing, the good thing, the good thing is that finally somebody convinced him. Amen. After a long time, he died in 2014 at the age of 91. Amen. What a soldier! But I'm here to tell you tonight uh, that while Hiro was a good soldier while he would have fought an excellent fight I've come to find out that there is a soldier that has been fighting to stay alive and while you may not agree with me I'm saying that there is a soldier that is getting a hard fight in 2024 this soldier goes by many names what of the name that the soldier go by is the book of the Lord. Somebody miss that. One of the name that the soldier goes by is that it is a scripture of truth. Somebody miss that. I said, what? You may have missed it. Somebody call it the oracles. Some other call it the gospel of God. I'm saying to somebody today that in 2024, there is a soldier that is fighting uh, to stay alive. Uh, but I'm so glad uh, that fight it as you will. Uh, you may have caused many times, 
to stand against it. But the word of God, it shall prevail. It shall stand forever. I'm here to tell somebody that hated as much as as much as you want. The Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, it is still the book of God. And while you may, uh, you, let me get into the word. The Bible says, the Bible says in Romans chapter 15 verse 4. For whatsoever what? Things were written and what? A full time were written. For all learning that what? We through patience and comfort of the scripture might have what? We are living in a hopeless generation. We are living in a serious time. Why? When you check the world, the world is confused. I hear people say that they are hoping that when election come, they're going to elect the next president in the United States. And they have to get rid of one to get... I hear some people say in Jamaica they can't wait for election because they need to cast their ballot because they need to let their voices be heard. I hear some people say that they are waiting on and the police to get rid of the criminals. You know what I learned, Alma, and the people out here? That some people say they're in free of that don't you? Mighty God. Some people say, Pastor, you don't know, know about Alma. <laughs> Alma, a terrible place. A but how come I come to a terrible place and I find such lovely people? My dear God. I'm saying to somebody that there is always uh, an opposition. Uh, but I'm so glad uh, that as long as we have life, uh, the Bible says that there are some things uh, that we need to look into. But I find out uh, that we want to tell the Bible what we want it to say. And the things that it says, uh, we say we will not do. Because the Bible don't always fit into our category. No man. You see, some people say, Pastor, you as an Adventist. I remember one time, you know, you see, I'm coming up on the rough side. I remember one time we stressed out. No, no, if you do it life, just left school. No CXC, confused, and no women are going to me. I get so confused that we grow up me here, nappy and thing and all these things. Look ragged and rough. And then I started a little journey. Yeah, man. My father is not an Adventist, you know, but one day the man come to me and say, Ma'am, you have to decide where you do with that here, you know. Mm. Either you have to cut the kill where I say, but your car looks so rough, man. Mm. I, I, I thought, Children, obey your parents. Amen. Yes, man, it's in the good book. It's, it's a good golden rule. Hold on to it. I, I follow my father. Yeah, and I call my brother and he cut off of here, man. Yes, sir. And then we start. Me and God start wrestle. Sometimes David and all these men wrestle with God. Wrestle with God until he give you your answer. Man. Amen. So I started to wrestle with God. And then as hear me and know, like many of I wonder if me are going right church. You have never questioned that? Yes. Or somebody? And then I started to dig into the word. And I started to ask the other churches, what do you believe? Some say they believe such and such. And I said, which scripture prove it? And they said, and I started to have a conversation with a certain set of young people. I wanted to understand where was their church pointing them to. And when I started to mix and mingle, I find out that they couldn't manage me. They said to me, you quote too much scripture, man. Do you know that some people have a problem when you quote the scriptures? Do you know that there are some people who don't want you to say anything or remind them that which God has said? Why? Because they say that the scripture is an offense. But I'm saying to you, while the Bible may hurt you at times, it is the same word of God that will heal you. I say, while you may not like it, it is good for you. Amen. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible. We are digging into it. 
we want to understand it. The fact is, the truth is, if you go to the Bible, you will not find the word Bible. No. That's it. You will you will not find the word Bible in it. You will find it being mentioned as a scripture. You will find it being mentioned as a word. You will find it being mentioned as a saying of God. These are the way that the scripture but we in 2024 believe it is a Bible or in other words, it is a canon. It is made up of how many books? 66. 66. It is made up of 66 books. 66 books that help us to understand who we are, why we came into it. Hear me, oh, somebody may hate the Bible, but I'm going to tell you the truth. Without the Bible, you don't know who you are, nor whose you are. I said without the Bible, a man can come to you and look at you who is fearfully and wonderfully made and tell you that you come from a monkey. Yes, Without understanding the Bible, you will never know your true identity. And that is why many people live their life as confused, knowing not what to do. It's because we have neglected the thus say the Lord and we find ourselves in problem. Why? Because God's people are not listening to him. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says, in John chapter 17, verse 14, chapter 17, it says, I have given them thy word. He says, I have given you something uh, that you should lift up to. He says, I've given you something uh, that you should hold on to. And it says, the world has hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of, of the world. He says, I pray not that those should take them out of the world, but that those should kept them from evil. He says, they are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. In other words, the Bible is telling us uh, that there are some people who God would have called out. Uh, when he called them out, uh, he would have given them his word. Uh, and when he gave them his word, uh, the world as it is, uh, hate them. Hear me up. Oh, when you love God, the world will hate you. When you choose her, uh, to obey God's words, it will not make you popular, but it will make you right. Say hallelujah, somebody. Amen. I said, when you hold on to the word of God, they're going to hate you. They're going to abuse you. But here's what the Bible says. Sanctify. Yes, sir. Sanctify them. Sanctify them. Yes. Choose thy truth. Thy word. Thy word. Yes, is truth. Can I tell you something? I've seen in Mark's questions that my teacher put on the board and the teacher was confused because the teacher can't find the end result. I've seen English teachers using bad grammar but I've yet to see where the Bible is wrong because I found out that every day I dig in it, it shows me that I Javain and Billings need to so that the word of God can live in me and make me a better person. Can somebody talk the truth before the word of God? You were messed up, you were tangled up, wrapped up in sin, confused, rejected. But when the word of God came, it hurt your ego and it could be mine. Imagine you are just a certain way. And the word of God tell us, hey, you can't be that uh, because you are a royal priesthood, a whole nation, uh, a peculiar people that are called forth uh, to shout the Come on, sir. I said the word of God sometimes uh, is gonna get you to a place uh, that you feel <laughs> whoever read the Bible and lock it up. No man, you have to talk the truth, man. Sometimes uh, you're reading the Bible and when it hits you and you find out that 
you were wrong, you start to skip the because it can't say so. But I say, if it says it, I will believe it, I will accept it, and I'm gonna follow it. You see, I may struggle to hold on to it, but it is still the word of the Almighty. The Bible says, Sanctify them. Truth, thy truth, thy word is good. I find out. I hear some people don't know. Pastor, we can't listen to the Bible. Hey, excuse me. We can't listen to it because we don't see how it makes sense. A man right there. Mm. Excuse, excuse. Can I tell you something? You peer for your picnic. Go to school. Go learn from a book. That I'm me sure I'm me positive. That a man write it. Why, why, when the picnic can't get the word from the book? You're back out your bed. Whoop, whoop, whoop. You know me learn that some pe some parents all a beat them picnic will learn, and then they say who will learn. But I'm saying to somebody today that the word of God, that while you may say it is man written, I've never met a book like that book because when it takes me, it shows me that the word as it is, it was created by a divine hand. It tells me that I'm fearfully, I'm wonderfully made. It tells me that sin came and messed up everything. But then it tells me that my God has paid the price. I'm saying to somebody today, there is hope in the word of God. There's hope in the B.I.P. I hear all song says the B I B L E. That's the book. For me, I stand alone on the word of God. It is still the B I B. But can I can I can I be truthful? Yes, sir. After that, some people use the B I B L E for some wicked song. Some people only quote the Bible when they're ready to go to evil. Never touch on the one night. Let me leave that a piece there a little bit later. But I'm going to touch that one. But can I tell you something? It is still sweet. But here some people know, no, Ella, 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 look at some, look at some. Here the one. Let me tell you something. Some people tell me, say, the Old Testament. Can I show you something? Can I show you something? That Timothy, as Paul was speaking to a young boy like myself, as he was about to take on ministry, he says, And from as from a child, thou hast known what the scripture which are able to make you wise unto what salvation through faith, which is in Christ. I say you may fight it. Without the Bible, you may have education, but you will be fully done, sir. I say you may hate it, but without the Bible, you may have money, but you won't have eternal life. I say without the Bible, you might hate it, but I say to you, only a fool says in his heart that there is no... It is the Bible. The Bible says, our scripture... Some people say, I trust the New Testament with you read. But Paul says what? All of the scripture is given by what? Inspiration and it's profit. No, 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 you miss that. Huh? I say, check your pastor. 
If your pastor tells you that it's only the New Testament you need to tell him to go and check back Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 3 when he told you that every single word the Bible says not one jot, not one tittle shall be removed. I said all of it, it belongs to God and God is hoping that somebody will take a look in the good book and give up and let God. Amen. We can share something again, Ella. Give us something more. Hear he, he the same person. A only New Testament. But when trouble take them, can I show you something? Can I show you something like that? Same person say a only New Testament. Here you know. Fight against those. Here is that located. No, 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 no. Hear them, the Lord is my shepherd. If you say that you only believe in the New Testament, leave me and my Psalms alone. Because when I'm in trouble, I run to the Psalms. When I need to know my identity, I run to Genesis. When I need to know about the wars that would have fought, I run to Judges. When I need to know about my Messiah, I run to Matthew, Mark, Luke. And when I need to know the end, I run to Revelation. I run to Daniel. I said every piece of it, it gives me a different. I said all of the scripture. Go back to your pastor and I ask him, Pastor. Oh yeah, tell me, say. A some piece of scripture of the Philistine. No, sir. Tell him, sir, man, you meet one like a mother, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anything you want to call me, man. But I said, tell him that I have told you and I've shown you that the Bible says every single word in it belongs to God. Richard. Now, can I tell you something? Yes. Without the Old Testament, the New Testament don't make sense. I said, if you're fighting against the Old Testament, you're fighting against the whole entire Bible. Yes. Because ask yourself the question, why did Jesus come? The beginning. I have to go back to Genesis. And Genesis tell me that because of our stubbornness, we got messed up. And then Jesus came. I said, when I asked myself the question, why is it that Paul had to go about preaching? The Bible tells me that there is a gospel that needs to be declared because the Israelites, they refuse to do it. And so God is calling upon some young people, some old people, and every single body he declared the word of God. Come on, man. Why is it? All scripture. Not so. All of them. Not a piece of it. Not just one part of it. But the entire P I P L E. It says all of it. It is given by inspiration and it's profitable. For what? Can I tell you about the doctrines? No. I, I learned recently that no people don't know what is a doctrine. I can I tell you? Yes. So the doctrine are the overall belief. It is a hierarchy. So for the Adventist church, we have six doctrines. The doctrine of God, theology, the doctrine of man, anthropology, the doctrine of uh, eschatology, the doctrine, there are six of them. Maybe you know me by the name here, but we can't tell you what they mean. All of the allergies, they are the allergies. Sometimes I'm allergy, allergy. But can I tell you something? That if you don't know your allergy, you will create an allergy. Here's a problem that most people do. Is that they feel as if uh, that they can tell the scripture that I don't want this part. And so I'm going to make up a doctrine and then I'm going to take some scripture and make... The Bible says when you're checking for your doctrine, it must be found every and everywhere in the Bible. Yes. You can't just come. Can I tell you something? Your feelings have no place in the Bible. Not that all. 
Sometimes our feelings is what is putting us in problem. The Bible said, do one thing. You say, I don't feel like that is what the Bible means. When the Bible is playing, you don't have to search it. It is there. It's saying, don't believe. Don't go. Do you remember? It was the same thing that caught me. Well, let me leave that alone until I get there. It's the same problem we had in Genesis. Is that the word of God is simple. But yet we say, no, sir. I'm going to try something just to test her. If it is so, the Bible is clear that whatsoever God says, uh, he means. Uh, I say God says what he means, uh, and he means what he says. Uh, you can't go around it. Uh, you can't go under it. Uh, you just got to accept it. Uh, and sometimes, uh, I know it is hard when you hear all these things. But here is the thing. There was a man. Yes. There was a man. By the name of Luther, he was a monk, Catholic monk. And he, he was living. I tell you, sometimes you know when you're, obedience is way better. That is right. Luther was one of those people who, even though he read the Bible, he allowed man to tell him a whole lot of things. <laughs> Luther would beat himself fast for tears. Saying that that is how righteousness come. But then he went into the word of God. And he found out that all of that was but in vain. In vain. In Can I tell you that if we were looking in the word of God, some of the things that we are doing, we would never do. Some of the things that we are saying, we would never say. Because why? You would find out that all that you are doing is in vain. Luther, as he went on with his beating of himself crucifying himself daily thinking that this is how he's gonna get salvation can i tell you if you want salvation if you want to know how salvation comes salvation is free amen you can't buy it because there's no money on earth that can afford it i say you can't it is priceless so luther as luther found himself Luther came to the conclusion of this. Solo scriptura. Yes, meaning scripture and scripture alone. Can I tell you under this stand that this is one thing that we're going to promise ourselves. Scripture. As we look at the fight that is happening in our life. That this one thing we're going to do. We are not going to preach our feelings. We're going to preach the word of God. Amen. Can I promise you that we're going to show you whatsoever we believe, not from a feeling standpoint, but from a thus say the Lord standpoint. But can, 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 can you do one thing? What's that? First time when we go to a tent, before the preacher preached, they used to say, stand up to your feet and say, if the Bible says it, I will believe it, I will accept it. And I will follow it. Amen. Can you challenge yourself that as the war rages on, if I can prove to you from the Bible that God is still real, that you're gonna follow him? No, 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 no. I thought I had some believers. If I prove to you that your sinful life can be changed, will you accept the free salvation that there is? No, 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 no. Yes. All scripture is given by inspiration. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for instruction unto righteousness, that the man of God might be what? Fully furnished unto all good works. Now there was a man. There was a man by the name of Voltaire. Voltaire in 1776. You know what Voltaire said? That he says he's going to give the Bible 100 years. He said within 100 years, he is going to guarantee that there will be no more Bible. He says if there is one, it will have to be chained somewhere by some... He's saying it has to be a crazy person 
who will lock away. You see, there are many philosophers who would have convinced many people that they don't need the word of God. But can I show you something? You want to see it? Yes. When you're dead, is the last thing that will be declared over your head. Yes, sir. Come on. Last thing. I said, Voltaire said, he is given the Bible only 100 years. That after this 100 years, he says, nobody will listen to the Bible anymore. Can I ask a question? Who knew Voltaire before I mentioned his name? <laughs> only one person. Can I see those who still know the Bible? You miss that. I said, Voltaire said that he is given the Bible in 1776. He said, I'm giving the Bible 100 years. But can I tell you another sweet piece of fact? Can I tell you? Yes, tell us. Within 50 years, Voltaire's house was turned into a Bible press. Hey, Look at my God. I say you might hate the Bible, but even when you are dead, the Bible still reigns on. I said for many years, some burned the Bible, some scoff at the Bible, some say that it is of no use. But I'm saying to you that the Bible still stands, even when man would have said all they want to say. The Bible is still here. Amen. Why? It's because it is the word of God. And God does nothing. But here's the problem. I know some of you, that some people, you want to reason with them, you know, man, I'm going to show them everything. They said to me, Pastor, God have he come down to tell me himself. himself. Eyes you have, but you cannot see. Ears, but you cannot hear. But he that have an ear, let him hear what the what the spirit of God says I said you might not like it but if you hear the voice of God speaking to his word the only wise thing is to submit yourself because you might fight the Bible but you can't win I say it is one man against the word and it is a word of God because it stands as God represented of himself on earth I said you might hate it hate it, curse it, curse it burn it, burn it to a Can I tell you, there was once upon a time that they used to burn the Bible some man, I, I hear one thing you know, that when he shot at them, he said he might do certain things, I remember at Godfrey Stewart, back in my days when war used to happen regularly one man did don't, one young you did don't every time I go fight, you know he have one of the little New Testament Bible in his pocket. Mm. You see, anytime you see him defeat that Bible, mm. everybody follow him because at war time, mm. if I go read piece of scripture, mm. I go fight. Mercy. Some men even say, guess what? In order to get a good high, a piece of Bible leave them. Mercy. Mercy. Can I tell you something? That as much as they want to do that, you can't destroy the word of God. It is the most printed book across the world. It is the most known book across any nation. I said they said the Harry Potter series, it was good, but this is no spooky story. I said they said that the Twilight series were good, but I said they were only for a little while. But I said the Bible, it still updates every book and it still outweighs any other instruction. Come on, I best literature. Can I tell you one other reason why we are in this situation? It's because we are not listening to the word of God. Do not listen to the word of God. But let me hasten on. Let me hasten on. Let me see the amount of time I have. I have but a few minutes to go. I have but a few minutes to go. Here's what I learned about the Bible. That it is the evidence of the divine. It is the evidence of the divine. 
You see, the stories in the Bible teach me that there is nothing that happened in, on earth uh, by chance. No. Go on. You see, God told Noah. Yes, sir. Build an ark. Yes. He listened. Yes. And he was saved. Amen. God told Abraham, it is time to move. He listened. And he was counted unto him righteousness. I said, God told many to do some simple things. And he tells me that if I listen to God, I said, if you listen to God, it will be of good to you. It is remarkable. It is very remarkable that no matter how you fight it, no matter you compare it, yet the message of the Bible is consistent. I said, here is the problem that we find ourselves, and we're going to dig into that. That we are living into a, in a world that has no morals. And it's because people of God would have said that anything and everything can go. But I'm saying that the author of the divine books that uh, told me that there is a way that seems right uh, unto a man. But the end dear offer is sudden destruction. I said within the book, uh, I hear that there are ten commandments uh, that needs to be followed. Uh, I said within the book, uh, I hear that there are some golden rules uh, that we need to follow within the book. Uh, I hear that there is some blessing that are pronounced upon God's people. I'm saying within that one book, uh, there is so much to learn. It is remarkable. It is uplifting. Uh, it enables those uh, who are suppressed and oppressed. Uh, I said nothing else uh, can do the work uh, that the Bible do. Hallelujah. I said, the Bible, the Bible, what songwriter says, the Bible, I'm a Shiloh. He says, bring me Bible. Come give me. Let me read one word. I said, emperors, they would have come and gone. Yet the Bible still remain. I said, many would have revered many books. And say, this is a book that would have made them wiser. But I hear Solomon says, it is because he would have allowed himself to find wisdom in the word of God. That is why he was considered the wisest man. No other book has such influence on the heart and the lives of people than the Bible. I've yet to see another book change the amount of lives the book called the Bible has changed. You see, the Bible, many may say that using it is of no effect in 2024. Why? Because you would have accepted that this is doomsday. You see, the 66 books are all sufficient of revelation to prepare us for sanctification. Amen. I said, the 66 books, they are God's revelation yes. to prepare us for sanctification so that we can reach glorification. Yes. I said, there is no other supernatural manifestation that can be seen like the Bible. But I say to you that if you hate it, hmm. that that's okay. Yes. If you hate it, that's okay. But I say to you that this one thing is true. That the one man against the world will not lose. Can't lose. Can't the lose. one man against the world cannot lose. will not and cannot lose. Man. Why? It is because it is a part of who God is. Man. The Bible is a part of who God is. And he says... He honored his word yes. above his name. His, one name. his own name. Glory God, God is saying to somebody tonight Come on. that you're going to hear some things Bring it down. from the Bible and you may not like it, but honor the Lord yes. with all of your heart. Amen. The Bible says, lean up to your own understanding, but in some of your ways. All few of your ways most of your ways but in all of your ways acknowledge him and he shall that's a divine word I hear the psalmist says thy word have 
hid in my heart. No, no, man, another one. A little bit down further. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And it is a what? It is a darkness. I say, it is what? A light unto my path. I say, a while ago, I was coming and I laughed because all dear was in darkness. But over here was in light. I say, step out of your darkness. Step into the word of God and you will find light for your talk and part. I say, you might feel as if you can't make it. But here's the Bible says, come on he with a labor and every day. And, and he says, I will give you rest sometimes. I'm bruised and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm done. But he says unto me, hold on. Hold on. He gives me a word and he says, some men may trust. Some may trust the Lord. Come on. But I'm going to trust in the name of the Lord. Amen. And I say, while I'm there and I'm broken, sometimes I'm hungry. I'm peckish. And it's when I went to the word, I find out that God has a thousand cattle up on a thousand here. I said, God, sell one of them now. I said, when I go to the word, I say, I'm stressed out. I'm confused. But I hear him say, I will never leave you. I said, sometimes when I'm down and about, I hear that, yes, that when I'm in camp and I'm bound about, it says the angel of the Lord. I've never what seen a, a situation in this life Can't that there's not a word. Encouragement for. in the Bible. Check the Bible. That is true. Some of your problems are only you're holding on to them because you have not hold on to the word of God. That is true. But I say to you, I'm saying to you tonight as I'm as I'm about to wrap up. I'm about to wrap up. I'm about to wrap up. That you are fighting each day. To stay alive. That's reality. And sometimes when you fight and you fight, you reach a point that you have accepted defeat. But victory belongs to Jesus. Amen. Come on. And with Christ, you are more than conquerors. That's what my Bible tells me. I don't know what will you struggle with underneath this thing. I don't know which point you are struggling with, but I'm here to tell you tonight that God wants to set you free. Amen. God wants to set you free. And how he set you free is by taking heed to the, the word, word of God. God. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. For this one month, we're going to dig into the word of God. We're going to see some stuff that we may not like, but we're going to hold on to the unchanging hand of God Amen. as we continue to sing about his unending love. I don't know what my songbird have to sing for me, but she's going to sing. Amen. And I want for you to contemplate tonight. I say, it's just the introdu introduction. We have not yet dig into anything deep. Mm. But I'm just saying to you, if you're wrestling, mm -hmm. if you're struggling, mm -hmm. I'm saying to you that the Bible can guarantee you victory. It can guarantee you victory and you can live a life that one that will alleviate even the pains that you're feeling. Tonight is a simple beginning of a new beginning. It's the first night we are here. The rain would have fell, but you came out. I'm saying especially to my visitors, if you would have Push your faith a little bit past the rain. Can I tell you that you need to push your faith a little bit past the rains in your life? Yes. I know that there are some things that are raining in your life and you can't seem to get it to stop. But I'm saying to you, if you just push a little bit further, some say pray until something happens. It is the B-I-B-L-E and one person say it is the acronym for basic instruction before leaving earth that is a bible you can't make it no other way but you gotta make it through god's way and every other way is a wrong bank 
It's one man against the world. Every times like this, we need a savior. In times like this, we need an anchor. Be very sure. Be very sure. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your anchor. Your you're here, you're here. You're saying, Pastor, I've read the Bible and I realize that I need to have a deeper relationship with Jesus. I realize to do the will of the Bible, it is a struggle, but it is a necessary struggle. Oh, you missed that. I said, the Bible will have you confused because your, your mind and everything will be telling you to go left. But the Bible will always tell you to go right. You want to say, preacher, not yet given my heart to God. And I want to understand the basic truths of the Bible. You're saying, pastor, I don't know everything. But here's it. 
I want to make a difference in my life by accepting the word of God. You have not yet given your heart to God. Just wave your hand. You're saying, I'm not yet giving my heart to God. But I, ah, God sees your hand, my sister. God sees your hand. God sees your Ah, God sees your hand, my friend. Anybody else? You are here. You know, ah, God sees that hand. God. Anybody else? Don't be afraid to tell the devil that I know I need to do better. Don't pray. Tell the devil, I know your plans. But I know the thoughts that my God think towards me. It is thoughts of what? A good thought starts of peace. Amen. That everything in your life can be good. I say to you tonight, this is the first night, but we are inviting you out every night to bring your Bible, to bring a piece of pen, or a piece of pencil, not a piece of pen, a whole pen. A piece of pen might put you in problem. And to bring something to fact check the preacher. As he will tell you what the Bible says. I can't tell you what I feel. I feel many things. There are some times I feel like I need to go to the bathroom and then my mind change. But the Bible has never changed. I said history is written through the Bible. I know I've done preach already, but can I share something else? That some people say, how do I know that the Bible is true? They can't know it. But the same people say, I want to be like Solomon. Some say, I can't believe the Bible. But they say, I want to be rich like Nebuchadnezzar. That's Bible. You might hate it, but you can't refuse that it is true. Don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to yourself. But tonight, I'm going to pray for especially those who would have raised their hands to say that they know they need to do something more. Because life as you have it will not last forever. Don't fool yourself. You might not be given a lengthy life, but you were given life. And to whom much is given, much is expected. You might say, Pastor, I'm not live long enough. But the truth is you weren't given guarantee a day. Each day should be lived knowing very well that you're making your calling and election, and election sure. sure. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Father, tonight, tonight we are reminded that the struggles that we face are not easy. Many times, God, we feel as if the inward man is more than the man that we want to be because we are all sinful wrapped up sometimes tied up in sin so much that they feel as if there is no hope but we are taking the name of jesus with us we have our sorrows and a war but we're expecting god the joy and comfort you will give us as we take your name wherever we go we pray in a special way god for those who would have raised their hands tonight god who are saying that they know that the struggle is real they can't even sometimes tell others what they are going through. But I learned, God, that if I read the Bible enough, I will see that not one of my struggles are unique to me. But someone would have been in it before, and you would have even gave them victory over it. We pray, divine God, that whatsoever situation may have arrested a child of yours, that you may step down and you may break the prison open. So that your child can walk out and give glory to your name. Tonight God is the first night. We are saying we are looking forward for greater things. But we ask so God that your children may not just come. But they may also submit to you we pray. She said name we pray say thanks. Amen. 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 Good night everyone. Good night. I must remind you. I should have reminded you. That here is it. That if you are here tonight. And you have your visitors. Please register your visitors. Make sure that somebody knows that you carry your 20 and your 25 individuals with you because there will be a special gift for those who, would, that person who would have brought the most individuals here. And we're also saying to you that starting on Tuesday night, if you listen good enough, that there will be quiz.
and the person who is most successful within the quiz, that there are prizes for you. Do have for yourself a blessed night.